Hello again, Anna Schmidt here, house healer, spirit clearer and psychic development teacher. And today we're going to talk about why some psychic cords can't be cut between people. Sometimes it's just not meant to happen. I did a video recently on cutting psychic cords away from toxic people. Uh, and it caused quite a few comments. So I thought I needed to expand on the information that I gave in that video. Okay, and management have chipped in with some information as well. All right, so let's get into it. Why psychic cords won't cut sometimes? Psychic cords are an energetic cord between people in our lives. Most of the time they're positive. Like we have cords to everybody, friends, family, workmates, anyone that you enjoy being around that's part of your life, you are going to have a psychic energy cord to that person. And within that cord passes, you know, love, forgiveness, compassion, but it can also, if the, if the relationship becomes toxic, sometimes toxic energy can pass between the two people and you can feel disconnected from yourself you can feel distraught you can feel upset that person's always in your mind and this is the reason why i made the other video because sometimes toxic people do need to be cut out of your life now this is not permanently this is something that i should have said in the other video i don't always mean you have to cut people out forever sometimes if a relationship becomes toxic you can disconnect from that person. It's an energetic disconnection. So you can disconnect from them socially, physically. You're not living with them anymore. You don't see them at work. But sometimes you need to disconnect that energy side of the connection. Now, if that person, if, you're, if your relationship with that person improves, a positive energy cord is going to be created again. So it's not about every time you have a disagreement with someone, oh, I'm going to cut the cord with them. That's not what it's about. Cutting cords is about releasing seriously toxic people that are causing you trauma and illness, whether it be emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. You just disconnect from them for a while. Okay, so that is one of the reasons why I made that other video. Now, why won't these cords cut? And there's quite a few reasons why they won't cut. When I sat down and thought about it, I went, yep, I need to talk about this. Often we are meant to learn from each other. It's just as simple as that. So whether you like someone or not, you they're in your life because you have got a lesson to learn from them. So it's about relaxing and going, okay. Freddie's in my life at work and Freddie's really difficult or am I part of that difficultness that's happening? It's about self-awareness. Am I part of the problem? And that's when your ego's got to step back so you can actually go, yeah, actually I might be part of the problem and I'm going to have a sit down with Freddie and we're going to work out what the issue is between us. And Freddie may have been wanting to do that but didn't know how to approach you because sometimes people can just be unapproachable. OK, so quite often we are called to people who are difficult from our perspective because we need to learn something from them. On a deeper level, do you actually want to be disconnected from that person? This is something that I ask myself before I cut a cord with someone. It's like, do I actually want to disconnect from them or is it? an impulsive moment of anger or rage or distress or upset where I just go, I just don't want them in my life anymore. So think about it before you go through the cord cutting process. Do you have something to learn from them? Or do they, management's just said, do they have something to learn from you? Because we're all teachers, it's all part of our life lessons and I'll put a video above about life lessons because we are all part of each other's lives because we learn and we teach each other. So I've just got to suck it up and go, he's in my life, she's in my life. How can I make this work? That's more important than just going, I'm just going to cut them out and that's done with it. Okay, mm -hmm. so do you have an emotional attachment to the person? Sometimes this can cause a cord to keep reattaching. So is there something you need to learn from that person? Now management will keep 
reattaching these cords because they're going, no, 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 you don't get to take the easy way out. Boom, there's the cord. You need to step up and find a way to get the process working between you. Have the conversation. Be the one that instigates the conversation that is going to improve your relationship. So then you've learned something, they have learned something, and then you can work together in a happier way. So thinking about what triggers you, what is it about this person that triggers you? I have someone in my life, I've been there for a very long time, still triggers me. I've attempted cutting the cord and it didn't work because I've had years and years, decades with this person. The cord won't cut. I haven't quite got to the core of what it is that I need to learn or this person needs to learn or what my realisation is about the situation. I'm sure it will dawn on me after making this video because quite often when you talk and express uh, things that are happening in your life, the vibration says, I'm ready to deal with this now because everything you create is through intention and creates a vibration. So this person, I'm sure there's going to be a conversation that's had where I will go, oh, I've actually been causing my own problems all these years. And I'm at a stage of awareness now where I don't get upset about that. My ego just goes, eh, don't care. I just go, hmm, so I've actually been causing my own problems with this person. That takes a lot of courage to actually own that and to be able to go, I'm going to be able to move on with this now. And then when you have interactions with that person or me personally, there's not going to be a problem. There's just not because I've worked out what the core issue is. Cutting the cord doesn't always get you to the core issue of what the problem is. It can help temporarily to get you more settled and more stable and then you go okay need to deal with that need to deal with this is your ego challenged by this person the one that I've got to deal with yes it is absolutely my ego is challenged and I get all these emotions and all these things rise to the surface and I'm like hmm I'm actually creating my own problem and the more I'm talking about it now I'm going yeah I think it's me it's not them. So there is a realization and I have need to sit down and do some more shadow work. I thought I'd done all that. We've never done with our shadow work and actually realize what it is about me. What am I bringing to this relationship that is causing an issue for me? Not causing an issue for them. They're unaware of what's going on. It's all happening in my energy field and in my physical body. So what can you do to change these situations with people that you think may be toxic or you just don't want to deal with them? It's all too hard. I can't cope. You can cut the cord temporarily while you work out a process and management won't let you get away with just cutting it and walking away. It's not how they work. The relationship's going to come round again and it's going to come round again till you actually deal with it because it's all about life lessons. So change your tact, which is what I just suggested when I was talking about this particular person that I'm seeing in my mind. I'm going to change my tact and look at, am I causing my own problems? Is there something about that person that I'm triggered by? Is there something that I'm jealous about? Is there something that they have that I want? And then you go, oh, the ego is quite... Um, prevalent in that situation. Working with your psychic cords and your relationships and your energetic attachments to people is all about ownership and accountability for your own side in it. People can't do anything to us unless we let them. Now I know that sounds that sounds harsh but it's absolutely true. We If we let someone hurt us they will. If we find a way to work with them or work around it or cut the cord temporarily, they can't hurt us. If you're in victim mode and some people like that attention, like that constant scenario of being in chaos and oh, it's poor me all the time, you're never going to be able to move on. And you're going to have so many psychic cords around you that become toxic because you're creating them. You just have to own it. That's really hard. 
I'm a Leo. It's hard for me to own my own stuff because I'm going, no, that's not me. Well, actually, it is me, and I have to suck it up and just deal with it. When you can do that, you actually start working on yourself. This improves your um, spiritual development, your psychic development, your holistic health, because you are not creating negative emotions that you store in your body or your energy field. You're not projecting negative emotions that are causing problems with other people. So you learn to just own it, deal with it. Then it's not a problem anymore. So let go of control. Seriously, I find it really hard. I'm a Leo. Leos are all about structure and control and this and this and this uh, will happen to get that outcome. I learned a few years ago, now I'm 52, I'm just like, oh, I don't control anything anymore. If management says to me, you need to disconnect from that person or you need to work on what that issue is for that person or that situation that's coming up, you can't go there or you really need to take a leading hand in that, I just do it. Because I know by doing it, I'm going to learn from it. The other person's going to benefit from it and it's not going to come back round and be harder to deal with next time. Because the more you don't deal with stuff, the harder it gets to deal with the next time. You know, sweep it under the carpet, oh, it'll go away. No, management will bring it back, keep bringing it back. If it's part of your life learning, then you've just got to deal with it. Okay, forgiveness and compassion. It can be really, really hard for your ego to let go of what people have, what you perceive as what people have done to you. Remember what I said before, we let things be done to us so that we learn from that, learn how to manage the situation better. When you can look at forgiving yourself and forgiving someone else for a situation, something that happened, something that was said, and this can be tough if it's a really traumatic situation, this can be so hard to do, but you can disconnect yourself from that situation by honestly offering forgiveness to the other person. Their higher self will accept it. On the outside, they may not accept it. All right, You don't have to go up to someone and say, oh, I really forgive you for being a bully to me when I was grade seven and you hit me and all this sort of thing, because they're going to go, what? I just don't remember. You do it between yourself and their higher self. It's just you offer that forgiveness. I forgive myself for being part of it. I forgive them for their part in the interaction. Now, on some level, the energy is going to ripple down and they're going to, next time they see you, it's going to be like, oh, like the relationships change slightly. They can't work out what the shift is. But you're more approachable to them because you've given forgiveness, you've offered compassion, you've let go of your attachment to the situation. So cutting psychic cords from toxic people is really a last resort. And I didn't state that in my other video, which I should have. You know, we all do these things. I'm not going to beat myself up over it. It was a place where I was at when I was told to make this video. And this is the reason why, because then I get to create the next video, which explains everything in more detail. So toxic people, when you do disconnect from them, ask that you're disconnected from them in previous lives as well, until you're ready to reconnect. Because quite often, as an energy field assessor and clearer of like emotional energy, traumatic energy in people's energy fields, when I look at trapped emotions in people's energy fields, uh, limiting beliefs, quite often past life vows, they go back lifetimes. You know, I've had some past lives with uh, like back six lifetimes with people. When I've cleared, when I've owned up, owned up to and cleared my connection to a situation or emotions that I've created about the situation, the relationship in this lifetime improves because energy travels with us through each lifetime. If you believe in reincarnation, you carry all your emotional baggage. If it's not dealt with in the last lifetime, you're going to carry it through into this one. So it's where you start owning and being accountable is when these cords aren't toxic anymore. I did an energy field assessment for myself recently. 
I thought, okay, I need to do it for myself. Found a cord to a particular person in this lifetime, not the one I mentioned earlier. I'm still working on that one. That one's quite deep. I haven't got to the core of that. But this other one, when I cleared the backlog of stuff that was there from previous lifetimes, when I saw that person, there was this big shift in energy and it was like, they're like, hi, how are you? Great to see you. Like nothing had ever happened. And I just let go of all that stuff from the past. We had a great conversation. We actually went out and had a coffee together, you know, had a chat. There's the healing. I'm getting all tingly down this side. They're going. Uh, there's the healing. Working on yourself heals yourself, but also situations, cords, energy, trauma that you have with other people. Now, when you do cord cutting, because you're changing the energy that is entering and leaving your physical body and your energy field, you're going to feel a bit zapped for a few days. So when you cut a cord, whether it's permanently, temporarily, you may feel tired, you may feel emotional. Address the emotions that come up. Talk to the emotions. Right? Ask them, show me what the core issue is. Show me the person I need to clear. This is doing the shadow work. So cutting cords is akin to doing the shadow work. Back to where I was. So when you cut the cord, you may feel tired, zapped of energy. You're going to need to rest. You need to slow, put the brakes on for a bit. Make sure you're hydrated, not with coffee, fizzy drinks, water, water, a little bit of lemon juice, right? Water's the best thing we can use to hydrate ourselves. In my opinion, it is. If you need to sleep more, sleep more. If you need to have a nap in the afternoon, go and have a nap in the afternoon. If you need to have a conversation with someone because there's something come up and you're like, I just need to ring that person. Ring them, have the conversation, feel the shift in your energy field because we are, our energy field holds everything within it. So all your emotions, all your traumas, everything that's ever happened to you in this lifetime and previous lifetimes, it's all there. When you start to shift it and clear it, I do it every day because I have to, because of the energies that come to me to be shifted, quite often uh, will attach to me because I've got, and I blame, shame, guilt, something going on. I need to clear that, then they're able to be moved on. So just remember, look after yourself. If you're doing any uh, self-development work, any psychic work, you're working with your cords, doing your shadow work, more hydration, Good, the best quality or good quality food that you can eat. Whole food, you know, fruit, veggies, meat, all the basics are really important for your body. Get more sleep. Turn off technology. Technology is a drain on our energy fields in more ways than one. That's an idea for another video. I could probably do that another time. So just remember, everyone's different as well. So when you do your cord cutting, uh, you may have this conversation with someone else and you go, oh, I did this cord cutting the other day and I feel really great. And they go, oh, well, it whacked me and I was out on the floor for a couple of days, just like really tired, a bit stressed, a bit drained. It's different for everybody. Okay, so I hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. I would love to have a conversation with you about why we can't cut energy cords sometimes. Okay, thank you so much and I'll see you again soon.